Hi, this is Daniel with Novels Live TV, and I'm here at the Barnes & Noble in West Jordan, Utah, and I have got Wendy Benson with me today, and she has written a spectacular book called The Boss of Myself, A Personal Journey of Taking Charge of Me. And welcome. Thank and you. tell us a little bit about what prompted you, first of all, to write this book. Actually, it was inspired. Um, I was at a low point in my life, and I knew I needed to change. I had two small children, and I, and I was overweight, and had high cholesterol, and I knew I wanted to live for them. And so um, approximately five years ago is when I hit my lowest point and decided I had to change. And this is actually a picture of before, and you really have changed considerably. And look at you now, you look really incredible. And we were talking earlier about the hardest step to take is what you say is the first step, and that's acknowledging what the issues are, acknowledging the problems. and. A lot of people don't want to go there. It's painful, very it painful. painful. Yep. My my nine truths in my book. Um, the first one is acknowledge your situation. So mm -hmm. it is facing the truth, basically. And a lot of people back off that and never want to face the truth. They want to just keep it hidden and denial is their best friend. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's the key to change is acknowledging your situation. I totally agree with that. And then the next one is the second truth is believe you can change and believe in yourself. Because mm -hmm. in order to change, you have to believe, and so that's the second step. And that's also a tough one, too, because I, I have a lot of friends that uh, recognize that they need to make the changes, but actually believing that they can change because they're 50 years old or whatever, whatever it is, you know, either they're too old or they're too stuck in their ways, I'll never be able to change. That's another huge step and another tough one. Huge step, yes. Um, and some people are so overweight or like you said, they think they're too old to change. Mm -hmm. It's never too late to change. You can always improve your life. Well, you see these these uh, people who graduate college at age 90. Exactly. So if they can do it, you know, anybody can make the change. They've just got to want to. Right, and that's the key. Believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Believe you can change. And, and somebody else can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Right. So what's the next step after that? The next step is choose to change. You have to make the choice. You, you have to believe, and then the mm -hmm. next one is you choose and you make that decision so you choose to change mm -hmm. and I mean I think with any kind of change you're gonna take maybe two steps forward one step back you know one day you make a lot of progress and the next day not so much right and that's okay yep. as long as you're progressing exactly and then what's after that create a plan so after you choose to change it, you have to create a plan and you have to decide whether you want to go back to school or if you want to get a better job or you want to release weight, whatever it might be, you have to create a plan, step-by-step mm -hmm. -step plan for whatever it is that you want to change. Well, and I always think that, okay, let's say um, I want to go back to college. What needs to happen to make that happen? So I need to go back to college, but what are the steps to take before I actually can go back to college? And I, I think there's a lot of little steps in between there, and it's okay to have a lot of steps before you actually make it to the big one, right? Right, yep. Okay, what's after that? Desire your new self. So you, you see this person and you envision yourself as that improved person and you have to desire that. You have to really want that mm -hmm. for yourself. Well, when you look in the mirror now, how does that make you feel? I feel a lot better. I'm still working on it and it will be a lifelong process. It is for everybody. Yes, but I feel so much better than this person on the back of this book. I mean, I feel a hundred, I bet you I do. feel alive. I bet you do. And so after you desire the change, then comes the real work? Yes. And then the okay. develop. Develop yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's the real work. That's the sweat and getting up and going to the gym every morning. And mm -hmm. it's the consistency of sticking to your plan. And, and it is hard. I, I think with anything, I used to exercise an hour and 40 minutes every single night. And I know my family would say, well, Mom, that's just too much or whatever. But I knew if I quit, getting right. back into the swing of it again was it's hard it's really hard to get into the habit but how many days does it usually take to set a habit do you talk about that in the book I don't talk about it but I have read that it takes approximately 30 days mm -hmm. it takes about 30 days to. to ingrain a habit into your life so after the desire then what comes and you educate yourself okay um, actually it's desire and develop and then you educate yourself okay so you if you want to for instance what I did is I studied nutrition and, and 
different kinds of exercise, so I educated myself on what I needed to do to mm -hmm. change my body. Mm -hmm. And I also read self-improvement books and expanded my thinking by reading um, different um, high-power self-improvement books mm -hmm. and business books as well. And, and I think that, that education is really important because what exercise might work for somebody who's bulking up mm -hmm. does, I, I was a dancer and so I go after those kind of exercises because that's what works for me. Exactly. And you've got to find what works for your body type and also for your personality. Exactly. And you have to have your goals within reason of your own body type too. Uh -huh. You can't put a supermodel on your vision board and hope that that's what you're going to look like. You have to be real with yourself and know your own body and your own, you know, your And know that they potential. Photoshop. <laughs> That's right. They do Photoshop. Yep. Big time. So, so the next step after education is? Energize yourself. Okay. So what I do to do that for myself is I change things up. I will change my routine, my workout routine. I'll change my iPod music mm -hmm. or, and I'll change up my books to different kinds of books. I'll read, you know, different novels instead of self-improvement books so it's it's important to energize yourself that yeah. way and, and have a change and keep excited exactly and I know I, I get into kind of a rut and and stay okay I listen to this kind of music before I go to right. bed and you know and and I think that that does energize you when you change it up even if it's ever so slightly right. it doesn't have to be a whole lot right and then what is the very last step evaluate yourself so now mm -hmm. you're you're coming back around to the acknowledgement so you evaluate what's going on right now say that you you hit a plateau, and you've you've um, you know you've you've gained you've uh, sorry kind of bottomed you've out. Reached, yeah, you've reached your you're kind of plateaued, and you're at a certain weight, or say that you're at a certain education level. Mm -hmm. You evaluate the situation, and then um, you know take it from there and improve or do whatever change make whatever, whatever Re -acknowledge. changes. Acknowledge yes, you, and then you goes back to the acknowledge mm -hmm. again. So you acknowledge your situation, and it starts all over again. And it is a, a lifelong process. It's not it something that you can ever say, okay, I'm done. Right. I'm as perfect as I can get right. because nobody is. And you can always improve on everything. And now we talked about our foundations too, how we both empower women and, and that sort of thing. And you're working. Tell us what you're doing with your foundation. Right now, it's um, we make a difference now dot org. Mm -hmm. And we are working with West Jordan City. We have a 5K, 10K, and a uh, one mile fun run. And right now we're working on um, working with a battered women's shelter. Which is what I do as well. Yeah. Is have um, in Las Vegas. So Wendy, thank you so much for coming. This sounds like an absolutely wonderful book. And we wish you all the best luck. Thank you.